Hi, this is Greg Robinson from MyPhotographyShow.com. I'm here right now to critique this image. It was sent by Earl, and he decided to name it Boardwalk Yellowstone. He says this is a shot of the snow-covered boardwalk up to the th thermal features at Yellowstone National Park. Thanks for that, Earl. This looks pretty good. I really like what you've done in this image. I think I'm going to critique it in three different parts. The first one is going to be a brief part about your settings. The second part will talk roughly about your composition. And the third part will be your message. Uh, so here we go. Let's get right into it. So, as you can see here, Earl decided to use 200 ISO for 1 60th of a second shutter speed and an aperture of f11. Now, I think I can guess what you tried to do here, Earl. Basically, you chose 200 ISO because it was a beautiful day outside, lots of sunshine, and you wanted the less noise possible. Logical. Then you chose an aperture of f11 to get the best out of your lenses. Contrasts, colors, and quality. Again, why not? And therefore, your camera proposed a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second for a perfect exposure. Um, actually, did it. For all you other viewers who do not know, uh, your camera can be tricked into thinking that the exposure it sees has to be darkened, especially in snow like this. I think that when Earl was about to take his picture, his camera was telling him to close that shutter speed badly because it was way too bright, but he didn't, and that was good. Well done for that, Earl. What happens is when your camera sees white, it tends to try and bring it gray, neutral gray. That's all it is. That's what your camera sensor is, basically. Your, your um, exposure meter in your camera tries to render everything that it sees that white into a perfectly natural gray. So snow has to be gray for a camera, which isn't the case. For us, we can perfectly see it's white. Snow is white, you know. So all you can do for that is overexpose your image. Do not listen to your camera in those cases. Uh, Earl did well here. Apart from one little feature, Earl, uh, your aperture f11. I mean, okay, you got the best out of your lens's quality, but did you get the amount of depth of field you were looking for, you were hoping for? Personally, when I'm shooting a landscape and I have a lot of depth, of field, uh, I tend to close my aperture to f16, if not f22. I really, really go far in that to get everything perfectly sharp and be in what we call a hyperfocal. Um, I'm not going to go into details on the hyperfocal, but uh, just know that if you close your shutter speed, your aperture, sorry, to f22, and you focus at about three feet then you're going to get roughly everything in your frame perfectly sharp, okay? This only works on a wide-angle lens. On a zoom, it doesn't work so well. Uh, you've got other things to take into account. Anyway, that's all I want to say about your settings. Your composition, my big problem for this image, Earl, unfortunately, is your horizon line. It's right in the middle of your, of your uh, composition here. Look, if I create a guide uh, on a 50% horizontal, you're going to see it's going to be smack on your horizontal line. Oh, okay, not smack on. <laughs> it's not too far away, but it's practically there, okay? You have to choose. We've got a match here that's going on between the bottom part of your frame and the top part. Who's winning? For the moment, it's a tie. I'd like to see either the bottom win or the top win. Given the low patterns and interest in your sky, I would have suggested tilting your camera slightly towards the floor in order to get more of it. So kind of bring your horizon line up to here and respect that rule of thirds in order to bring harmony throughout your image. Uh, the only way I could show you what it can bring here is, is if I crop your image, um, let's bring it down to about here and try and keep the main interest. Actually, I'm going to keep it like that. I'll tell you why in a minute. If I do that, your image becomes so much more interesting, so much more harmonious. Now, why is that? Firstly, your horizon is on the top third, okay? That is a one rule to respect in photography and composition. To get the best compositions, to get the most interesting images, you have to respect that rule. Second part is your um, boardwalk here. It's slightly to the left. It's re respecting another part of the rule of thirds, uh, which is basically the, the, the vertical first third. See? It's smack on there. And so our eye is kind of guided through the frame like that, starting down here and going like that. It's much, much more interesting than what you had going before, where your image was full of... It, it was basically doing a cross. 
you've got your horizon line just here in the middle and you've got your path, your boardwalk here, which is in the middle as well. So it kind of stops us, you know, we see a cross, we kind of stop reading it. So try and create this kind of curvy um, relationship with the viewer's eye by respecting the rule of thirds like that, okay? And lastly, what I would have suggested is your point of view. Uh, the message you're trying to bring to us here is look at how beautiful it is over here. Okay, great, perfect snapshot. But were you, were you, were you looking for a snapshot or were you looking for an interesting image? If you're looking for an interesting image, then you have to be interesting. <laughs> now, how do you do that? What I would have suggested in this situation is what would a dog see, for example? You're on the boardwalk and you, you're trying to imagine what a dog would see. Now, a dog comes to roughly between our knee and our hip. So that's where your camera has to be. Just bring your camera down to roughly the, your hip or your knee between the two and that way you'll have a new point of view people don't look at the world through that angle so why don't you propose that that's an interesting angle it's a new viewpoint or you can even go lower and pretend you're a field mouse the thing is there you'd see much less depth uh, in the um, on the land you'd see much more sky in your composition on the contrary you can even get a, a huge ladder and go up you know try and find somewhere where you can go in up in height and shoot downwards like that. Just try and propose different points of view to make your image a little more interesting, okay? I hope you've enjoyed this critique. Thanks, Earl, for sending your image in. Uh, I hope you other viewers also enjoyed it and learned something. That's the whole point of these videos. Try and find us on YouTube, on My Photography Show, and subscribe to our channel. Find us on Facebook and like our page, once again, My Photography Show. And on Twitter, it turns into My Photo Show because Twitter likes uh, shortening our texts. So it's my photo show on Twitter. Follow us on that because we've got different things going on on the different social medias. And obviously come to myphotographyshow.com to send your images in for a free critique. I am here to help you learn photography. That's the whole point of these critiques is they, they, uh, they help you learn and see and think differently in your photography and make better images. Hope to see you soon. This is Greg Robinson from myphotographyshow.com saying have a nice day.